Good morning, this is Pastor Jeff. This is my final day being out at church camp. It is Friday, July 16th, 2021, and I'm outside here by the lake to be able to talk to you about the three scriptures today. Psalm 23, Jeremiah 10, 17-25, and Acts 17, 16-31. Do you hear them bark, squirking behind me? Here we go. Psalm 23. We are going to be doing this in the message once again. I had to scroll all the way up because the camera went dead a little bit earlier. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid. When you walk at my side, your trusty shepherd crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head with cups, brims with blessings. Your beauty and love chase after me. Every day of my life, I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. Jeremiah chapter 10 verses 17 through 25 is the Old Testament reading. Grab your bags, all of you under attack. God has given notice. Attention, I'm evicting everyone who lives here. And right now, yes, right now, I'm going to press them to the limit to squeeze the life right out of them. But it's a black day for me. Hopelessly wounded, I said, why, oh why, did I think I could bear it? My house is ruined. The roof caved in. Our children are gone. We'll never see them again. No one left to help in rebuilding. No one to make a new start. It's because our leaders are stupid. They never asked God for counsel, and so nothing worked right. The people are scattered all over. But listen, something's coming. A big commotion from the northern borders. Judah's towns are about to be smashed left to all the stray dogs and cats i know god that mere mortals can't run their own lives that men and women don't have what it takes to take charge of life so correct us god as you see best don't lose your temper that would be the end of us vent your anger on the godless nations who refuse to acknowledge you and on the people who won't pray to you the very ones who made a meal out of Jacob, yes, made a meal, and devoured him whole, people and pastures alike. Our New Testament reading today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 16 through 31. The longer Paul waited in Athens for Silas and Timothy, the angrier he got. All those idols! The city was a junkyard of idols. He discussed it with the Jews and other like-minded people at the meeting place. And every day he went out on the streets and talked with anyone who happened along. He got to know some of the Epicureans and the Stoic intellectuals pretty well through these conversations. Some of them dismissed him with sarcasm. What a moron! But others listened to him to go on about Jesus and the resurrection. They were intrigued. That's a new slant on the gods. Tell us more. These people got together and asked him to make a public presentation over at the Ephesus, where things were a little quieter. They said, this is a new one on us. We've never heard anything quite like it. Where did you come up with this anyway? Explain it so we can understand. Downtown Athens was a great place for gossip. There were always people hanging around, natives and tourists alike, waiting for the latest tidbit on almost anything. So Paul took his stand in the open space of Ephesus and laid it all out for them. It's plain to see that you atheists take your religion seriously. When I arrived here the other day, I was fascinated with all the shrines I came across. And then I found one inscribed to the God nobody knows. I'm here to introduce you to this God so you can worship 
intellectually, who you are dealing with. The God who made the world and everything in it, this master of sky and land, doesn't live in custom main shrines or need the human race to run errands for him, as if he couldn't take care of himself. Starting from scratch, he made the entire human race and made the earth hospitable with plenty of time and living space so that we could seek after God and not just grope around in the dark, but actually find him. He doesn't play hide and seek with us. He's not remote. He's near. We live and move in him. Can't get away from him. One of your poets said it well. We're the God created. Well, if we are the God created, it doesn't make a lot of sense to think that we could hire a sculptor to chisel a God out of stone for us, does it? God overlooks it as long as you don't know any better. But that time is past. The unknown is now known. And he is calling for a radical life change. He has set a day when the entire human race will be judged and everything set right. And he has already appointed the judge, confirming him before everyone by raising him from the dead. And here ends our readings for the day. Now I'm going to lift up my phone so you can take a view of what is behind me. There we go. Kind of on the dock. There's the water behind me. And the kids at confirmation camp absolutely loved being out on the water. Whether it was with the canoe, the boat, swimming, making sandcastles. Have a great day. Bye.